Today's episode of The Fine Wino is brought to you from London, a city that does not need any introduction at all. And I'll be having some delicious Bordeaux with a delightful root spivy. All right, Ruth. Great to see you here in London at the Winemakers Club, Ruth Spivey. Mm -hmm. You are the London ambassador for the uh, Star Wine List, and you also have the Wine Car Boots. Wine Car Boots, yes. Wine Car boot. Can you tell us a little bit about the Star Wine List and the Wine Car Boots? Yes, what sure. is that all about? Um, mm -hmm. Star Wine List is, I suppose, a, a, like an online guide to great places to drink. To so, drink where, yeah, so there's obviously lots of those websites for, for food and chefs, and they focus on the menu and, and whatever. So it's just it's similar to that, but they've got um, it's real focus on the sommeliers and the wine list. So your your grueling job is to walk around and try great wine yeah, in places in London. Yeah, it is London. terrible. So, and then Wine Car Boot is a um, independent wine market, which I set up and founded um, six years ago now. Um, so it started off as an event, and now it's sort of morphed into more of a, a regular market. So it's like a farmer's market, but for wine. Um, and it promotes independent wine shops. Um, the strap lines taste your way out of the supermarket. All right, and what have you picked for us today? So I have brought a bottle of Chateau Bel Air Marquis um, Del Grey from 1998. I've had a long-standing interest and love of Bordeaux. Um, this wine in particular I only discovered fairly recently, um, but it's got a really interesting story and it's so it's a very historical estate. It's, it's my goal, yeah. yeah. So, and it's the um, Jean-Pierre Boyer who is the winemaker. He works pretty much on his own and it's been, the estate's been in his family for for a long time and he's he's now 85 I think. He did his first vintage there in 1950. That's amazing. So he's done now 68 vintages which is incredible and he does it so pretty much he works on his own it's quite a, there's about 50 hectares across the whole estate but only I think somewhere between 10 and 20 that are under vines so it's and they've got some super old vines as well dating back even 100 years on original rootstocks. So. Amazing. So he's obviously been making wine a long time so it's traditional in that sense but it's the sort of proper traditional rather than obviously now Bordeaux's got a huge amount of money involved in it yes. and, and a lot of you know whether it's money a lot of gloss a lot of new oak um, a lot of you know inflated prices um, he doesn't sell he releases his wines when he's ready he doesn't sell on premier so he's got he still like old school. does things the really old school way I think a lot of people think Bordeaux's old school just because it's traditional with uh, all the you know the estates with the style of it but actually I suppose that the, the new, all the money injected is actually still is quite new sure. so he's and you say he's right by um, Chateau Margaux as well so he's right in the thick of all the, the sort of like fancy pants bit mm -hmm. but he's got his own little thing going right, on things, and he's been yeah. doing that for, for a really long time and I know you you, cor you uncorked this uh, yeah I, I checked it this morning just to check that it was check, uh -huh. checked as well yeah <laughs> fills it up with some other wine afterwards oh no um, <laughs> so no I, I opened up this morning just and gave it a quick I chucked it in a decanter just to yeah. open it up um, and managed to break the cork as I was opening it which is nice but Eager Beaver. Still, yeah Should we pour this? yeah yeah no, go ahead What are you finding here? It's smells, fresh. Yeah, it's fresh, but still it's got all those savoury, tertiary, leathery. I mean, it's very much alive. It's still got lots of time in it as well, but it feels like a sort of like a live wine. It's yes. quite energetic. Yes. It's yes. not. It feels like it's like I don't want to say natural because that word gets you start going down. But, but I, it's I, I see what you mean. It, like it yes. feels like it has come from the ground. It doesn't feel like it's been it's processed. heavily processed exactly. or heavily extracted, heavily oaked no. or anything. It feels like it's it's still so. Sort of wow, I might just have to make one of these so from you. It smells unequivocally of Bordeaux, which is I, I like. I like the flavours of Bordeaux you get. I know some people prefer, you know, maybe fresher fruit, but I like all that sort of savoury leatheriness. But it's it's got a little bit of that umami complexity uh -huh. coming to it but it's still got fruit and delicacy and, and bright liftedness as well so it's we need so, to get yeah. propose a toast to Jean-Pierre Boyer we do uh, there you go well hopefully long may he keep, continue, keep doing I it know. for many more years well, if you can yeah. he's, unfortunately he's I know he hasn't he's got almost any, 90 years old yeah he hasn't got any children oh, and no. so there's yeah and his maybe parents can adopt died. us or something yeah or maybe I'm hoping he might see this and <laughs> think that you might like to pass it on to me. I love the fact that we're, we're drinking this wine and yeah. it's, it's not even um, uh, lunchtime yet. It's like a brunch wine. You can have, yeah, it's definitely a, brec a breakfast Bordeaux. Breakfast Bordeaux, yeah. 
So anyway, this is uh, Bordeaux, uh, but in, uh, in uh, the UK for a long, long time. You've also called it a claret, mm -hmm. and uh, I've never really understood the reason behind that. Do you know why is it called claret? It comes from, um, the word claret is, is derived from the Latin word for clear. So oh, okay. it was when, uh, a few hundred years ago, when the, actually the wines from Bordeaux were much paler than they are now, so almost as like a dark rosé. So, so it sounds for sort of clear and pale coloured. So. Um, so it's like a quality over. kind of thing. So, yeah, and I think yeah. So they and they were obviously being, um, they were clear, bright. Um, it's a marketing thing. Sort of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. Okay. It's it's weird because it's lots of people don't. No one. I still um, keep trying to keep the word Clarus alive. <laughs> I think it's a traditional. Yeah, I know. I think it, I'm, I'm on a one woman mission with that one, <laughs> but I try and say it as much as I possibly can. So, um, but it's definitely a word that I mean, it's then carried over. It's become the, the sort of nickname or pet name for Red Bordeaux um, in the UK, but it's it's now attached to sort of fussy old men in tweed uh -huh. drinking their claret. Claret. And me. And you. <laughs> I mean, so I think originally people called them like lunch wines because, you know, a simple cl claret for lunch, 12.5%, you know, you don't when you don't want something that's going to knock you out, no. so you can at least pretend to do it's like a, It's like a nice little Chianti, it's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And then I suppose, over, you know, there was, I mean, I think maybe the trend or the interest in heavy wines that are, you know, sort of big and rich and got a lot of oak. I don't know, there's a lot of, I don't know, it's, they seem quite gratuitous now as well, like, you know, buying new oak every year, it's, and, you know, making them as powerful and as and as strong as possible. It's sort of, I don't know, it's, it's like, it's a bit sort of just like dick swinging. And there's no need, because you can't drink that much of them, that many, so. It's a little you know, bit like what? Dick swinging. Dick swinging, okay. It's Look a, that up. That's, a, yeah, it's a wine term, it's definitely a wine term. There's a lot of it that goes on, I think. So, um, but you know, it's sort of a bit, why not have, you know, you can have wines that sort of, I mean, I, th I think that they show off more because they've got more sort of delicacy and, and interest, um, but you know, they're not so in your face, but that means, you know, you sort of long term, I think, you know, you play the long game with drinking, we're not just go for your 15% big boozy. We want to go the, the, the whole nine yards. Yeah, exactly. So I think you can, you know, it's just, they feel a little bit more sensitive and, and sort of human and, you know, so. It's funny that actually when in recent years, the longer I've worked in wine, I've noticed a lot, it seems like the sort of wine people often prefer white or I've been at more, dinners and things where there's more white wine and, and tasting menus as well if you do the wine pairing they often which always drives me mad because I mean I can drink red wine like it's going out of fashion so <laughs> but um, but a lot of tasting menus will start with white and then maybe a bigger white and then a bit of skin contact and then you get one red and then you're on to dessert and you're kind of like and you're back on yeah. like Tokai or some white yeah, wine again. Yeah, I'm just back on some white, <laughs> white wine. I was like, so I had thought like I should maybe, well, maybe I suppose you should phone in a bottle and say, can I have all red pairings with my nail? <laughs> yeah, like, if I had to get rid of one colour, I'm 100% team red. <laughs> I, I should I mean, say this, yeah. but I agree completely. It's totally right, yeah. <laughs> so. And that's what you do yeah. when, you, when you're traveling around Europe, you go to wine shops? Yeah, if I can't, yeah. I mean, I travel for work and then even if I'm not traveling for work, if my boyfriend and I go away, we tend to end up being in a wine region. It turns into a wine trip, whatever we do. Usually the wine regions are the most beautiful regions Yeah, exactly. Anyways. And then you say, oh, we, do, we try and say to ourselves, we try and like go, right, okay, we'll go somewhere. Obviously we always want to go somewhere where there's access to good wine. And But I'm just like, let's not do it. But we always seem to end up going around, around to visit someone or something. So it's like, before you know it, I'm like, yeah, I'm on a wine trip again. I thought this was a holiday. Well, I'm on, on a wine trip yeah. right now, right so, here with yeah. you in London. So, and it's, yeah. it's so lovely to drink wine so with you, nice. Ruth. Thank you. I, I found one I was just in, what am I, when I was in France and then I drove across and went to Lyon and up to Burgundy and there was some great, really great wine shops in Lyon and I found a bottle, a 1979 Bourgogne Rouge, which okay. it was, it's the, my boyfriend's birthday wine, um, bought it, kind of, I just was like, and it was, it was, it was, I mean, it wasn't super expensive, but it was it, cheap enough for me to take a gamble. Uh -huh. It was a great producer, but it's a new Bourgogne Rouge, so you you know, it could go, and it turned out it was brilliant, so it, it was oh, one of those gambles that went well. But that's the thing, but you don't, you don't always, I think. Otherwise, you must, you must change the boyfriend, because. Yeah, exactly, or get a be better vintage. <laughs> <Another thing here. laughs> it's, it's a bad vintage, so it means it's cheaper. If I was like, at least, if he was like, I don't know, if it, I, 
I'm not going to go out with someone from 1982. I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 85, okay, 82. Sure, though, when you first date, you're like, what, what year are you born? You don't want to go younger. Or no. Older than that, 75. Exactly. Just, yeah. So you've got to find, like, yeah, always go out with someone from a cheap vintage. <laughs> so. That's a great, that's a great idea. Very good. Ruth, uh, we've been having this wine now for almost an hour and uh, uh, breakfast has turned into lunch. What should pleasure. we drink next? I always get that question. <laughs> And it's been a great pleasure having you here, or Thank me being your yeah, guest here in your, in no, your lovely yeah. place here. No, it's an no, Not it's your place, special. but it's a No, it's a very up. special place in London, so I'm glad that you were able to see it. So I hope very next nice. time you're over, definitely will come for a, for a session. Bottoms I up. find it very hard to leave this place. So. <laughs> Cheers, on you. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more, subscribe to his channel, which is there. Like him on Facebook and follow on Instagram. So I always bring Christian in because he has to try the wine and uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he thinks this time. He's usually not that enthusiastic. Let's see what, what he thinks. Okay. Christian, come here. Come on. Choo choo. Right, so we're going to have a nice little Bel Air Marquis d'Aligre Margot 98. And we've uh, thoroughly enjoyed this wine, so we hope you will do the same. It's a really good wine. All right. It's good you're here. Right. Please do. I think it's corked. <laughs>